Welcome. Let us prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship by quieting ourselves. Let us breathe in and out with our eyes closed for a moment or two, and then I'll lead us in an opening prayer. Breathe in, breathe out, settle into your chair, quiet your mind. Open yourself and ask God's Spirit to reside upon your heart and to connect you with persons of faith from every time and place, age and nation who look to the Lord our God. Breathe in and breathe out. God is with us. Let us pray. O oh God, to turn away from you is to fall, to turn toward you is to rise, and to stand before you is to abide forever. Grant us, dear Lord, in all our duties your help, in all our uncertainties your guidance, in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Be with us now and always. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 24. If you are at home and you have opened the attachment with the worship order, you may read aloud or responsibly with others who are present. Listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in God's temple. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me. Answer me. Come, my heart says, seek God's face. Your face, O God, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. God promises that as far as from the east is from the west, that is how far God removes our sins and transgressions from us. So trusting in the grace, mercy, and forgiveness of God, let us confess our sins. Let us pray. Gracious God, we have been casual about our faith. We have been cruel to our neighbors. We have been careless in word and deed. Saving God, forgive us. Help us to change. Help us to reflect your light. Help us to share your love. Help us to live your salvation this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now confess our personal sins by making our personal confession in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Our prayer for illumination.
illumination is the one verse hymn, Spirit of the Living God. Please sing along with me. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Our scripture comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 1 through 7. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents have sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The God-man Jesus of Nazareth meets a man born blind and heals him. The blind man gets a miracle he didn't even ask for. Hello, blind man. My name is Jesus. I'm going to heal you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hocker up a big loogie. I'm going to mix it with some dirt. And I'm going to smear that all over your eyes. And you're going to see. Now hold still. If I'd have been that man, I would have said, no, wait, hold on. Time out here, Jesus. Let, let me understand this. You're going to cough up some mucus. And then you're going to add it to the dirt from this street where people walk barefoot, where animals defecate willy-nilly. And you're going to rub that on my eyes? Come on. Don't you know? We're in the book of John. In chapter 11, you raise Lazarus from the dead. It's right there in verse 43. You say, Lazarus, come out. You miracle him back to life by verbal command. I know we're just in chapter 9, but can't you just do that for me? Because I'd like my miracle with the saliva on the side, if you could. In fact, hold the spit, hold the dirt. I'd like a plain verbal miracle. No hawkers, no dirt to go. Can you please just do that for me? But we don't really get a say in how God saves us. God just does it. Jesus does it the way Jesus does it. When I was eight years old, I was the man in this story. Dad was building fence out at the barn and I took his hammer to bust open some rocks. I was looking for gold and that's when it happened. A steel sliver splintered off the head of the hammer and it flew right into my left eye. It stayed there the rest of that day and the next day when, after I came home from school, mom noticed that I was playing behind a sofa because the light hurt my eyes. So mom and dad took me to the doctor. He took a look at me and he sent me to an eye specialist in Indianapolis. And that eye specialist said the most terrifying things I've ever heard. We're going to operate right now. Well, we drove over to the Riley Hospital for Children in Indianapolis, where there we had to wait. 
I'd had a snack after school that day and they had to wait for the food to clear my stomach so I could be anesthetized. I didn't care though because the nurse brought a cool model car for mom and me to assemble. It was a Ford Mustang. I forgot all about my eye. I was happy. Mom, of course, was in hell. Eventually, they wheeled me in under a big round light and people in masks gathered all around me. Next thing I knew, it was night. I woke up in bed in a big ward with lots of other kids. I was terrified. There were needles in both my legs, IV lines. I'd never been away from home by myself overnight. I was so terrified. Where were mom and dad? The night nurse told me that they'd come to see me tomorrow morning, and they did. I was so happy. Mom and dad hugged me, and they told me that the doctor said my eye was going to be okay. And it was. The doctor said I would have lost that eye if I had had it in my eye 12 more hours. But my eye was safe. And I got to be the coolest kid in the annual school Christmas pageant. I got to look like a pirate. But God treated me like an angel. God took care of me. God's miracle has been going on now for over 50 years. Today, I still have two good eyes. But I had to go through a whole lot more than an external application of dirt and spit. My eye ached for hours before I was treated. My poor parents had to wait and endure the nightmare of not knowing. A surgeon cut into my eyeball and removed the steel needle lodged in there. I was terrified alone in the dark with IVs in my legs, but despite all the hurt, waiting, anxiety, and surgery, as a blinded kid, I got a miracle that I never even asked for. Today, we're all in the midst of a miracle that we are asking for. God is at work fighting the coronavirus. God is working to save us through the decisions of our leaders, through the help of medical professionals, and through the actions we're all taking together to be stay safe and to stay safe. God is working through all the anxiety, the waiting, and all the other pain in the neck things that we've got to do. Most of God's miracles, you see, require some sweat equity from us. God got the Hebrews out of Egyptian slavery, but still, the Hebrews had to put one foot in front of the other and walk all the way through the desert to get to the Promised Land. Even Lazarus, who was miracled back into life, had to stay dead for four days. Our Savior was raised by God. But even Jesus had to be in the tomb for three days. The blind man in this story, after his miracle, gets hassled. He's thrown out as an outcast. But Jesus goes to him, and Jesus comes to us to let us know that everything is going to be okay. Because God is good. God is going to be who God is supposed to be. God is going to do what God is supposed to do. God always has. God always will. And that applies to you. The miracles of God aren't locked away in the Bible. They aren't sequestered to the ancient dusty past. No, the miracles in the Bible are there to tell us not only what God did then, but also to point to what God is doing now. Present tense, here, now. God is saving us. But like the miracle in John chapter 9 that came covered in spit, our miracle is going to come with its not-so-savory parts as well. Our lives are disrupted, but 
social distancing will slow this thing down so it can be defeated. Who likes singing happy birthday every time you wash your hands, which is practically every two minutes? Who wants to stay at home? Who wants to wipe down the kitchen counter again? None of us. But as we do the things that only we can do, God is going to do the things that only God can do. God will make the way as we make the effort. Yes, there are fears, but also there is faith. Yes, there are pains and changes, but there is also the providence of God that is unchanging. God will get us through this time. Working with God and each other, we shall survive. All we have to do is keep looking to God and keep doing what we're supposed to do. As we all take small steps together, God will make big things happen. Good things. God things. So here's mud in your eye. Here's to the unavoidable but blessed, pain in the butt, but nonetheless heaven sent things that we have to do to get this miracle in place for us and our world. We can do it. God is doing it. Let us trust that and live. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble for the health and well-being of our nation, of all nations and all peoples on this planet, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the isolated and housebound, so that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend ourselves, our world, and all for whom we pray to your mercy and protection. Receive now these, our silent prayers. Merciful God, we thank you for hearing us, for loving us, and for saving us. We ask all these things in the name of our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive now the charge and the benediction. Let us live with hope, act with compassion, and continue to do the things that we are asked to do, knowing that God will take care of all the rest. So let us go forth into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Honor, love, and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.